Good morning, everyone. So good to see you yet another Sunday morning. We're here to worship God and to just give Him all the praise. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Our call to worship this morning will be from John 17, verses 15 to 21. John 17, 15 to 21. My prayer is not that you take them out of this world, but you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that I may do, that, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I also, I pray also for those who will believe in me through, the mess, through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. All Okay, hear and reading of God's own word, may the church say, Amen. Above all, um, powers is our opening um, song. Let's stand. And I need to welcome those who are on cyberspace. Welcome to you, who are um, wherever you are. Welcome. Grateful. And Lord, wherever we are ungrateful, 
please have mercy on us and forgive us here. Lord. Lord, we just want to bring to you here, Lord, all those who are sick. Lord, let your healing hand just cover them now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, for the doctors, the nurses, and all the other critical care workers, dear Lord, who are providing such a wonderful job, dear Lord, to keep us healthy, to recover us, or to assist in recovering us whenever we get sick. I pray a special blessing upon them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to pray, dear Lord, for our security forces. They have recently lost three, three, three lives, dear Lord, and we pray for comfort for them. We pray for their protection, dear Lord, as they continue the dangerous work of protecting us, dear Lord, and cover them too, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, dear Lord, for our government and opposition. And we pray, dear Lord, that they may put aside their differences and they may work together in unity for the betterment of Jamaica, dear Lord. Lord, we want to work across the world, dear Lord, and we see where the COVID-19 is raising, the figures are raising rapidly in many countries, dear Lord, especially the USA. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that there will be a, a great in despite, dear Lord. We pray for the leadership, that they may be wise, and they may do the make necessary decisions to protect the people, dear Lord, your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we open our borders, Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that you may just cover us and that we may be able to protect our borders. Although we want the business, we pray that our borders may be protected and we may be protected in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, for your, your people, the Christians, dear Lord. A lot of them, dear Lord, are very fearful right now. They are fear, fearful to come out. They are fearful to, to, to go anywhere. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus to bind up the spirit of fear, dear Lord. And I pray that they may protect themselves and go out and declare that Jesus is still the King of Kings. Jesus is still the Lord of Lord. And he's coming back soon to claim you as his bride. So Father, we pray. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with your man's servant who will be bringing the word today, dear Lord. Use it powerfully to challenge you. We pray for those who don't know you, dear Lord, as Lord and Savior, that they, dear Lord, may be put in their hearts and they may want to come and to run and to taste and see of your goodness. Remember our young people, dear Lord. I pray for them, dear Lord. These are challenging times for them also. I pray they may look to you, dear Lord, always and nowhere else. Cover them now, I pray, as we give you all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. This time we're going to be going into our praise time and invite our praise team just to come and just to lead us in our praise and worship session. Praise team.
And so we take a tighter grip. Times rough, times hard. But we take a tighter grip on Almighty God. Come on. Which version? Young people version? Young people. Young people version. So what are you doing up here though? Alright. <laughs> Let's go. Take a grip. Come on.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for His mercy and be able to the privilege to bring all praises to His name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to be going into the Word right now, and we're going to be inviting uh, Pastor Jackson to come. Uh, for those of you who may not know, Pastor Jackson is a senior minister of this congregation, and he has been here since he's a teenager. All that is unimportant. God has a special word for him today. So I urge you just to sit down and just listen intent to the word of God. Let's sing bless thy word as God's message comes. Bless thy word. Lord, in Christ's name. 
Amen. You know, God's people must, if we have not done so before, we have to begin to realize that this world will present us with unfavorable circumstances. Any amens? Amen. Okay, we have to realize that. We are going to be presented with unfavorable circumstances. Well, here it put up there, you never know what I was going to talk about, but he put up there for the cause of worship. Jesus' prayer when he said, I pray that you do not, I do not pray that you take them out of this world, but that you keep them from the evil one. And, and, and this is all that we can go for. This is all that, 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 that we are promised. We are going to be taken out of it. But God has promised that He will keep us from the evil one. All right, and so we will be having these unfavorable um, conditions as we are in this world. And you know why that happens? It is simply because we do not belong here. We are not citizens of this world. We are of another kingdom. Our local address is here on earth, but our true home is in heaven. You know, I, I, I looked at the, the, the um, Gospel of John and to what Jesus said in John 15, verses 18 to about 20. I'm reading from NIV. John 15, 18 to 20. It says, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. That's clear and plain. I don't think that needs much um, expounding or anything. It is clear. You do not belong to the world. So don't be surprised if the world hates you. And whatever was done to Christ in this world will be done to Christ's followers also. Was Christ treated like he, 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 he shouldn't have been. Was he, was he treated um, like, like a king? Like the king he was? No, he wasn't. No. And so we will suffer. Uh, we will have circumstances that are adverse in this, in this world. We, not, we, we are not to be surprised because that is the stark reality that believers must face. We are kingdom people. Remember that. We are kingdom people. And, and the sooner we, we come to grips with that, it is the better that we will understand the things that happen to us in this world and how we interpret these circumstances. Okay? Jesus said something to Pilate. I, I, I just turned over the page in, in, in John. John 18 and verse 36. He said something to Pilate. And, and what he said in gist is that his kingdom is not of this world. He said it was from another place. He said, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish demons. But now my kingdom is from another place. And we know where that other place is. He went back to that place. He's gone to prepare a place for us. Okay? He went back there. That's where his kingdom really is. It is not of this world. And we are children of the kingdom. Therefore, we are not of this world also. Alright? I briefly overheard someone teaching. I just passed, in passing I heard it, that the doctrine of heaven serves to make God's people lack ambition. When we talk about heaven and another place where we have to, where, where, where we belong to, it makes us lack ambition. 
Hmm. Not only that, but it causes us not to attach any responsibility to be involved in world affairs. No, no, I don't know where you got that from. Because certainly I don't feel as if I have no ambition. I, I believe in heaven. Do you feel as if you have no ambition? Because you believe in heaven? Because you are preparing yourself to live in heaven. You feel ambitionless? No, no, I don't. So I don't know where you got that from. Because if Christians felt this way, we would be living in communes. You know what? We would be living just normal lives. You know? We would be living in communes. And, 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 and the influence of this world would not, would not be of us. Would not be impacting us. But as far as I know, the last time I checked, people who do that are cults. <laughs> they are cults. Yeah. And, and, and they are led by people who are deceivers. People like Jim Jones. You know what Jim Jones did in the jungles of Diana? Took the people out there and pushed and had them dead. <laughs> okay. So, so we, we, we don't, I, I don't subscribe to that, that thought. Right? I always have to remember that I am in the world, but I am not and not of the world. Amen? Not of the world. So we operate in this space that is called earth. But we must fix our minds not on this earth, but in heaven where our Lord and Savior resides. That's what Colossians 3 verses 1 to 3 says to us. Right? Colossians 3, 1 to 3. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So, I understand from that that I am here on earth, but my mind, and you see the mind is a critical part of us, you know, the mind is where the battle is fought. My mind must be set on the things that are heavenly, the things that are above, the things where God, where Christ resides. So because we do not belong here, we are not to expect favorable service. Yeah, you say I fish out the water. Yeah? I love fish now when I catch fish and take them out of the water. Can I understand that the next the next trip is to the frying pan? Yeah. No. He's jumping and he's jumping up and he's trying to get back into the water until he just flops and flops and flops until he dies. Well like fish out the water. Well that says we have died. And our life is hid in Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christ did not promise that we would get favor in the circumstances. Neither did Christ experience that while he was on the earth. This is what he told his disciples. Turn again to John 16. And I tell you, when I read this passage of scripture, John 16, 28, from about 33, when I read this passage of scripture, it sounds something like what is happening here today. <laughs> he said to the said, said, I came from the Father and entered the world. And I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, No, we are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. No, we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. This is the Jesus' um, response. Do you know, believe? Jesus replied, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. So some like us have you know. <laughs> right? If you scatter each to your own home, you will leave me all alone. Yet I'm not alone. For my Father is with me. I have told you these things 
so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's what Jesus said to his disciples, clear and plain. He said, the peace that you are going to have in this world is in me. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. Not in the world, in me. Because in this world, trouble is going to come. We are going to be plagued with adverse worldly circumstances. As long as we are living here, this is not the Garden of Eden. Right? This is not heaven. This is a sinful world. A world in which the prince of the power of the air is at work. And boy, I tell you, does he hate us? He hates us with a passion and he's doing everything possible to cause us this. And so, don't be surprised when your circumstances become adverse. Just remember that Christ prepared us for it by saying, Seek the peace that I will give to you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. That's what Jesus said. And so, some, the word of God said, have been scattered each to their own home. We are now scattered in a sense. And there was a time before this when, when we were only allowed 10 people in church. Everybody was in his own uh, or her own home. But thank God we never left Jesus alone. <laughs> Those disciples ran and they left Jesus. But Jesus Christ was still with us. And he's always with us. And he will never leave us. And he will never forsake us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Persecution has always Always. Remember the words of Christ in the passage that was read from John 15, verse 20. Remember we said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. So persecution has been a feature of the church of God. In Hebrews 11, I want to just look a little bit at what, what the writer says. Um, the persecution looks like. Hebrews 11, verse 30. Hebrews 11, 32. How much more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, and wrote in foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released, so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers, flogging, and in chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went out in sheep skins and goat skins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. They, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. You see, this is just giving us, this is just giving us a, a look into it. It said, it said they didn't receive it because God had planned something better for us 
so that only together with us would they be made perfect. <laughs> you see, you know if anybody being sawed into as a Christian because of your faith, I don't know that. I don't know about that. You know that I'm in Jamaica, some of these things that are so many Christians, they're, 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 they're flagging us, they're, when I'm about the jeers and the insult, they mock us, they, they tease us. But look, that is what persecution is. And that's where our brothers and sisters in the faith um, um, were at one time. That's what happened to them, torture. I praise God. I praise God that we are not in that era. I praise the Lord. You know what that did? That separated the hypocrites from the genuine ones. As no hypocrite wanted to get stoned and tortured for something that they truly didn't believe in. And that's the foundation that Christianity is built upon. Where people are willing to die for their belief, for their faith. I come to the conclusion when I read that passage of scripture that in this pandemic, the church is not being persecuted. Some people think so. Some people are led to believe that this, this is a persecution of the church. Church is not. This is nothing. This is nothing. Uh, because you see, if, 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 if we would claim that we were being persecuted, I believe that the entertainment industry persecution, right? They're not up here. We at least open up and they are still in the mood. They don't claim persecution and eh? so all those people who are not yet back to full um, capacity who claim persecution. So this is not persecution. We need to learn to roll with the punches that the circumstances will of this world will throw at us. The circumstances of this world will throw some punches that God's keeping us. But we must learn to roll with the punches. Roll with them. Don't let it hit you down. Right? You know, rolling with the punches is a boxing term. Right? So you punch and I, 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 I move away. So I don't get the full impact of the, the punch. Right? So that's what we need to do as God's people. We need to learn to roll with the, the punches that, that the adverse circumstances of this life will give to us. I remember listening to a lady on a, a religious radio station, ranting, she was ranting, one big rant and raving about um, Christians should not be worshipping in masks. She was going on and on. She went and she said, God don't want his people to worship in masks. I don't know where she found that one, but anyway, and she went on and she said, um, she said, uh, all of the things that the protocol that the government was giving to everybody, not just the church, to everybody, she was in defiance of them. She, she, she was, she was almost behaving as if those protocols only belonged to the church. I said, whoa, whoa, how misguided. The general populace has to wear masks. Eh? I can't understand. I said to myself, um, I, I don't know if you can understand this. How can people wear a bar and wear masks? <laughs> but they must wear masks in bars. Eh? They don't wear to drink. You can't drink through your mask. Unless you want to pour a hole in it and put a straw into your drink. But, but all public places, have to wear masks. I go to the supermarket and I see a sign. No mask, no service, no entry. Huh? Have you seen those signs? I've seen them all around the place. So it's not a church thing. This is not a church protocol. This is for all of us, for help. You know, when you buy a box to go and shop, don't, don't, don't bottom beer. And I saw that on that shop, right? No mask. No, oh, sir, this. <laughs> and that was just a, a community grocery shop, a community food shop. 
and I saw that and eh? people are required to wear masks at the beach. Hmm. I guess they might call a persecution. In public transportation, people must wear masks. Right? Even in gyms, people go to gyms. When they are going to gym to, to go on with the thing, they are told that they should wear masks. Hmm. It is not as if the church is being singled out now. Right? These are just difficult times. These are adverse times. We are in a public health crisis. Yeah. And it is just responsible for us as God's people to do whatever it takes to ensure that we stay safe and that we also protect others from any anything that might might um, reach them. Anything, because sometimes I hear about people who are who are asymptomatic. They have it but they don't show any any, any um, signs or any symptoms. You don't know if you are like that. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. I believe this is just a test, you know, um, brother, of the Christian method. This is just a test, you know. This is not one yet, you know. This is just a test. And I think that many of God's people are failing this test easily. It's just a test. It's not a big thing. It's a test. <laughs> I can worship God in a mask. Because worship of God is in spirit and in. Is that that one? Worship of God is in? And in truth. And in truth. My spirit is not masked. It may be uncomfortable. But I want to ask you a question. Is it that you can only worship God when you are comfortable? Think about it. Is that the only time that you can worship God in comfort? Hmm. I remember David. David was running up and down the place. David had no abiding city running from Saul. Here, here, there's a, a man here all in touch, sent him run around the place. And let me tell you, there was no greater praise than David. Amen. With all of the circumstances, the adverse worldly circumstances, there was an evil man running him down to kill him. David was still able to write some songs of praise. Is it? That today we are able to, to read them, to sing them, and get strength. Amen. 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 Our outward man will suffer. Our outward man will perish. But our inward man must be renewed at the same time. Amen. While our outward man suffers, our inward man must be renewed. I didn't say so. The word of God says so. Said so. Look in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Those two things are happening simultaneously. Outward man wasting away, inward man being renewed every day. Every day. Continue on, brother. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes. Not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's the attitude. That's the mode that Christians should be in. Especially when adverse circumstances come about. We must always remember that it can only affect our outward man. It ought to only affect our outward man. But our inward man must be renewed. We must be renewed in spirit day by day. Because you hear what Paul calls it a light affliction. It's light. And it's going to work for us. Great, great glory. Eternal glory. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we will have trouble in this world. But because Christ overcame this world, we shall overcome. Amen. We have overcome. Hmm. You see, Christians fellowship is important. And I, and I am I am kind of stewing this to deal with what is happening in this time. Because fellowship is important to the God. Amen? Amen? Of course. Fellowship is important. And, 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 and sometimes us Christians don't take the advice of the word. See yourself, you know, we know it, but we don't take the advice. See yourself. Remember what he was spent 25 tells us? Who oh, remembers? He who was spent 25. Remember what he remembers? What's that number? Not forsaking. All right. That's exactly what he talks about. He says, not giving up or not forsaking meeting together. As some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Take it seriously. This is an advice to us. I'm glad that we are all here. I'm glad that we are here. Because we are taking this seriously. We don't want to give up on an meeting with each other. Mm -hmm. We want to do it even more so as we see the day of the Lord. Approaching. Amen? Amen? Amen. Lack of fellowship dries up our spiritual reservoir. Tell you what to do. I don't want you to try this. Don't, don't try this at home. But listen to this. Now, some of you may have experienced this. Maybe you have a funeral to go to. On the Sunday, say we stretch. The next Sunday, maybe a family member come from far. And you have to go up country. And you have to go there. And we stretch. The next Sunday, the iron in your grip goes. Sunday morning, usually they should go. I do something. I am born on the whole in the middle. Close, right? <laughs> the mom here. Somebody saw like a truck, a school in the pen and he did that. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, ball on the wall in your clothes. You just get frustrated and I say, you know what? We need to hurry here. We can't have that. So that's three Sundays. Let me tell you something. Whether you believe it or not, that takes a toll on your spirit. Whether you believe it or not. It, is, it gets easier to miss the next Sunday. Right. Yeah. And why? Because your spiritual reservoir is leaking. Fellowship, or should I say the lack thereof, dries out the spiritual reservoir. You saw where the beaches were open recently. You saw it, right? You saw what happened on television here. Beaches were open recently, rivers. And there was a flood of people flocking on um, the beaches, right? And, 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 <laughs> I mean, they weren't even paying any, any attention to Port They were just glad that the beaches were open. The church is not being flocked though. Even though, unlike the beaches, the churches were never closed. They're not being flat. Hmm. I believe that we should be so flooded that we have to maybe have a third service by our own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we should be thirsty for fellowship. And we should want fellowship. We want to see our brothers and sisters. Even though we can't have food too much with them and give them the hope that we would have wanted to give them, but we want to see them. I walked to the church this morning and I said, boys, a long time ago, I said, I didn't know who said that you were going to be the rest of our ship. That I don't see you the whole week. See you. I'm glad. Some of you can't even recognize you behind your mask. But I don't care. I know you are here. <laughs> I know you are here. 
Right? So, lack of fellowship, stars and withers the inner, inner man. While well, fellowship, in any way, shape, or form, fellowship helps in the building and the renewal of the spirit. Amen? Amen. Half a fellowship loaf is better than no bread. Amen. That's my, my little phrase, right? Better than no bread. So, when we are faced with worldly circumstances, we must be like the early church. The early church was a persecuted church. Picked on by the state because of their beliefs and they were brutally hunted down. Mm. A death sentence hung over their lives. Eh? Like, 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 like the mythical sword of Damocles that was hanging over uh, the, the head by a, a hair. That was what happened to, to, to those Christians. They were this close to death every time, every time. I remember Paul saying, I die daily. <laughs> I don't know what he meant by that. I die daily, he said. That is persecution. This is not persecution. Even under those circumstances, the Christians sought to fellowship and worship together, despite of what was happening. Despite the fact that they could lose their lives, they still had their little places where they had to sign on the fish. Hmm? To, to make people know that a Christian is worship here. Yeah, they did it. So when the world puts us under pressure, it should bring the best out of us. Amen? Amen. Pressure should bring the best out of God's people. You see, brethren, Christians are called to be soldiers. That's what we are called. Right? It's not my term. Paul uses that when he was talking to Timothy. Right? We, are, we are to be tough and we are to be resilient in spirit in hard times. Mm. So just do not operate in any conditions. No? Especially in a time of war. So just do not operate in ideal conditions. They are trained to, to face unforgiving circumstances. Circumstances that would down to lesser men and women. They face heat. They face fatigue. Pain. Stress. Discomfort. And deprivation. And yet, they fight on for king and country. They are soldiers. Christian soldiers must display similar attributes. In 2 Timothy, Verse 2, 3 and 4 verses. Um, 2 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. This is what Paul is saying to Timothy. He says, Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs but rather tries to please his commanding officer. That's all we have to do. Serving as soldiers. We have to see the, 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 the adverse conditions and circumstances of this world as a training, training that will equip us for kingdom. We are we in a war? Aren't we? Are we in a war? If you don't feel like you're in a war, maybe. You have gone a war. I'm sent me down to fish and leave. If you don't feel like you're in a war, maybe I'm laying down an arm. And stop fighting. But we are in a war. And we have to be prepared to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. For the king of kings and for the country that we are looking to hope, the country that we belong. Just like when the soldier fights for king and country, we fight for the king of kings and the country that God has promised us. Amen? Amen. 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 How will we respond to hardships? Hmm? Oh, because, because how we respond to trouble sometimes and hardships in this world 
is going to decide whether we are milk drinking or meat eating Christians. How we respond is going to decide whether we are whips or we are warriors. How we respond is going to decide whether we are poor or poor Christians or powerful Christians. These signs will not face the mature child of God. They will not. Because they understand that they may be mass, but their spirits are free. Amen. They understand that their physical hands may be restricted from touching a brother or sister, but they can still raise their arms and praise God. They understand that their voices may be muffled behind the mass, but their voices can still shout hallelujah, still shout amen to the God who hears their whisper and who knows the cries of their hearts. So Christians, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in His mighty power. A sifting is happening. Sifting. The wheat will remain and the child or the trash will be going to blow away. The cream is going to rise to the top. The anointed will stay at the top. In the troubled waters of life. You see, all our water don't mix. And so the anointing will come up at the top, above the troubled waters of this life. The pure flow will remain, while the weevils and the dregs will remain in the sea to be thrown away. God's people have to be purged. An adverse worldly circumstances is the fire that purges us. Let me say it again. We must be purged. And we are purged because of the adverse worldly circumstances that we must face. The fire. It is fire that purges God's people. We have to be like gold, tried with fire, refined to become pure. Gold. In spite of the pressure and the fire that we face in this world, let us not lose hope or faith. We are securely held by a God who promises us that nothing can separate us from His love. Amen. We are held by a God who says that no one can pluck us out of His hand. We are held by a God who said, I will never leave you, nor will I. So what does that mean now is nothing compared to the things that are happening, are going to happen uh, based on the book of Revelation. I have been hearing all kinds of conspiracy theories from those who are uninformed and ignorant concerning the last day's prophecies. All kinds of things. People have been talking about Antichrist, Revelation and Reveal, and all these things are going on. And sometimes these are religious leaders who are speaking. Here in the flock by crying wolf. I urge them to be careful, or else they may be caught napping when the real wolf comes on the scene. It's not a wolf. As I said before, this is just a test, a fire drill, if you may. The worst is yet to come. I pray that God's people will be prepared for that. I want to close with these words. Ask a question and answer it. What is having my temperature taken before I enter the sanctuary? Nothing. Because, you see me, I am hot to Jesus. What is sitting six feet from my brother or sister in church? What is it? Nothing. Because physical distance is not social. Distancing. They got the term around me. It's not social distancing in Christ. What is fear in a mask in worship? Absolutely nothing. Because God, God hears me. And listen to this, my brethren can, for the first time, truly see if my mask smile is real or hypocrisy. Just by looking into my eyes. What is having to sanitize basically? I mean, sanitize 
all the time, physically. Nothing. Because my heart is already sanitized. So let's snap out of this persecution mode. Snap out of it. We are blessed. Amen. We are blessed. We need to pray for our brethren who have to stay at home. Because of age or because of underlying conditions. They are the ones who are truly suffering at this time. Yes. Give them a call. Cheer them up. Encourage them. They desire to fellowship. And no one who you want to come in now. No. 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 Right? But they desire to fellowship, but they are under restriction. Stop complaining about the prevailing circumstances. Seek to cheer up those who are real victims at this time. Remember, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Meditate on those words. Our light and momentary troubles. Amen. God bless you. Is it your 
sincere desire to reconnect, to turn over, to renew your life in Christ? Will you repeat this after me? I still believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord living God, and I still take as my Lord and Savior. There is a lot of Just I want to pray for you. Shall we give you thanks, Lord, that you are rich. Give you thanks, Lord, God, that he was inspired, Lord, to allow the shepherd of his soul to continue to guide him. Father, God, I give you thanks, Lord, that you have preserved him for this day. I pray, Lord, God, that as he goes forward, and Lord, your spirit will be you. And that, Lord, God, you may surrender yourself so that, Lord, God, his life may be one that glorifies you. Even in your hands, no, Lord, where you sin, in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, God. Amen. This time, we're going to invite Brother Melba Murdoch. He will be leading us into our communion time. Why are the 
wisdom of men is, is self-seeking. The wisdom of Almighty God is soul-searching. And for the redemption of mankind. And that is why we should take the communion like him. We should. Because it is a reminder to us that as God's people, in his wisdom, we exist in this time, in this moment, because God knows that for whatever it is that, that we that are thrown at us in this time, that we are able to overcome through the blood of Jesus Christ in this moment. It's a sobering thought. God who is all knowledge, all wise, all powerful. His wisdom is for all good. Why don't we think about that? While we pray. Gracious Father, we truly want to thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that through the blood of Jesus Christ we were made to be overcome. That Lord God, through, through the suffering of your Son, Lord God, we we will be afforded the opportunity, Lord God, to, to remain in your presence. Here and now. And for a time to come. We thank you, Lord. And we ask as we prepare to partake of your holy coming. That Lord God, you will forgive our sins. For we pray in Christ's name.
Let's sit down. He gave it to his disciples and said, Eat. For this is my body. Should be broken for you. Let's talk about that. Likewise. I lay my hand to the pot. So stay with the fruit of the vine. Let's eat and give it to them and say, Drink. This is my body. To be shed for the remission of sins. That's our party. Dear Lord, we truly want to thank you, Lord God, for that. That old rugged cross. It might be a, it might have been a, a symbol of shame for me. But for your people, for those who are redeemed, it remains a symbol of victory. We thank you, Lord. And we ask, Lord God, that you will continue to strengthen us as we fight the good fight of faith. In Christ's name, amen.
All right. Next week we're going to announce the final price of the tickets. Um, but so please. Um, and one other thing, we have our Bible reading. We have been giving you our Bible reading. We're starting back today. Bible reading with Matthew 1 to 5. Matthew chapters 1 to 5. Alright? So, Bible reading Matthew 1 to 5. Please remember that version. Alright? So, those are the announcements. Um, let's just stand. There will be a baptism this afternoon. Um, Sonia Hill, who is the sister to Sister Lorna Hill, and uh, grandmother to Shanil. Is last right. Um, we'll be baptized this afternoon, so let's pray that that goes well and everything. And, and, and let's pray for return and uh, being able to come here. Alright, so look forward to that. Let's just stand in now as we close in prayer and then we will um, be Father, thank you for today. We thank you for your blessings. Lord, we pray that our worship today may have been acceptable to you. Cover us, O Lord, as we give you all the praise and glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the Amen. God bless you all.